Hi, it's Randy. As most of you probably know by now, yesterday was World Narcissistic Abuse Awareness Day, and I would recommend you all going to WNAAD.com. There you can uh, download, if you don't already have it, Dropbox, and you will get podcasts every day of the week this week that you can listen to at your leisure. And then if you don't like Dropbox, you can get rid of it afterwards. So I found out some really, really good new information today that I wanted to share with you. I wish I could take credit for it, but I can't. It was an interview with Sandra L. Brown, in case you don't have time to listen to this. Let me try to sum it up for you. Some great new information. It wasn't about narcissistic abuse, but it was about the survivors and it's basically common sense, but there's a lot of validation in it, especially for those of us who were not necessarily really abused as children and uh, are not necessarily thinking of ourselves as codependent and really tired of kind of being placed in that kind of a box, that category of, oh, um, you know, You've got all these childhood issues to address and um, you know you have PTSD that's long long standing and you just keep picking the same people over and over again some of that us that did not apply to and I'm one of them so I was really happy to hear this new information there's actually been a study uh, so Sandra L Brown talks about a study that was done and I can't remember how many narcissistic abuse survivors participated in the study. It was a large, it was like somewhere like between like 600, 800, might have even been 1200. There was a lot. And what they found was that people who have gone through narcissistic abuse, basically the kind of people that narcissists target, have certain kinds of personality characteristics. Well, duh, we knew that. We're, we're empathic and um, give them, give, likely give people a second chance and uh, see people as primarily good. We already knew that, or at least we had a feeling, but now there's actually a, su a study that proves it. So they gave um, these narcissistic abuse survivors some questionnaires, surveys, or whatever, and they found uh, a lot of commonalities within them. First of all, they found out that they had very similar professions. So what they all did in their employment, in their personal life, in terms of making money, was very similar. Most of them are in the caring professions. So nurses, um, uh, therapists, social workers, artists, people are, that are mainly right-brained, people that um, are not as left-brained or into logic, you know, so not accountants. And they even found that those that were not in caring professions, when they questioned them further, they found that these people were not necessarily in professions that they liked or wanted to go into, but they went into them for some other reason, like perhaps money or maybe their parents didn't want them to become a social worker because obviously social workers, they don't really make that much money, right? Um, FYI, in case you didn't know. Um, anyways, so that's one commonality that survivors tend to be um, in the helping professions or or the caring professions. They're caretakers, caregivers. Um, the thing is, is that these are not really traits that we can change. Just like the narcissist has a personality disorder, the people that narcissists tend to target also have common personality traits that are actually hardwired into us. But they tend to be the good traits, like the ones that we've all, always heard about. When I went to Catholic school, I always heard about altruism and giving people the benefit of the doubt, being cooperative. I thought that these were good things. And to actually see people in the world as um, good and having a positive outlook that other people are basically good 
um, I thought this was a good way to look at the world and I didn't have a problem with it because naturally that's how I was so um, when they scored these uh, narcissistic abuse survivors survivors on different traits one of them was agreeableness and most of them scored in the high normal range and they're calling these traits uh, that set us up to be targets basically super traits so they're actually really good traits to have okay but the bad thing and they and they help us in our career they're great for people that are in the helping profession or the caring a caring profession in fact that's one of the reasons probably why we do so well at our jobs because we really can understand that human component to things we're not just narrow-minded we um, are people people basically <laughs> and um, another trait is altruism the narcissistic abuse survivors scored high on altruism and also scored high on being cooperative instead of uh, aggressive or uh, antagonistic like some other people um, we had a more positive outlook and we were also much more motivated toward assisting others versus attacking them so here we've got these great traits right but and they work out really well for us in many areas of our lives especially you know with relationships with non-narcissists right but where they hurt us is where we're a target and they to act any differently than that is to kind of go against our own grain to go against our own personality and these things um, again are not necessarily due to our own family upbringing because we are the way we are our personality d develops and is pretty much set in, set in stone and another point that Miss Brown made is, is that we can understand and learn about red flags, but when we see the red flags, or we have intuition about being uh, with somebody who is showing red flags, our innate personality traits that tell us people are basically good, that overrides our intuition that we're getting that's pointing out to us sirening red flag red flag so it's not our fault um, and we've been blaming ourselves saying I saw the red flags but I still did it anyway of course we did because that's who we are and we're always saying you know that's how the narcissist is right well this is how we are too except this is how we are in a really good way it just doesn't always work out for us when we get hooked up with somebody who is so manipulative and these lying, cheating, you know, assholes, especially the covert ones. We can't, we can't figure it out. We can't tell. And we always are like, well, we could find every reason under the sun about why that same way we may have acted that way or, or and that we'd like to give ourselves the benefit of the doubt for things so why wouldn't we give someone else the benefit of the doubt well the problem is we shouldn't not when we first meet somebody because we do it too many times and we end up in deep in deep into a relationship with somebody that turns out we've kind of allowed to fool us really through no fault of our own um, it's just the way it is right so um, if you want to hear more about the study about narcissistic abuse survivors and these super traits that we tend to have you can listen to the podcast it's day two we're only on day two now so there's still five more podcasts to go I hope the rest um, are as good as this one it really gave me a lot of validation it doesn't give much hope in terms of well am I gonna be able to change am I gonna be able to you know just like be like really strict and mean and logical and oh screw him you know no matter if he shows one red flag I'm out of there or you know am I gonna 
become an introvert, stay in my house, not go out with anybody, um, never trust again. Actually, what they said is that people like us, people like me, we basically shouldn't trust anybody. We should, we should really keep our guard, guard up. I mean, that's where I disagree. And it's not like I want to get into another relationship with a narcissist, but I also think that there are people that are not narcissists that I can get into a relationship. So I am willing to take that risk. I mean, if it happens again, it happens again. Hopefully I don't spend 16 years with the person if it does happen again. I can't change. I don't want to change these things about myself. Um, I know the red flags. I am being super picky. I am maintaining standards. I do have really good boundaries. As far as the rest of it goes, it's all going to be by chance. If these assholes, you know, if some charming asshole just rides up on his white horse, I probably will go with them. I swear to God. I mean, I am admitting this to you. Um, because I am really bored, I am tired of not having a relationship, and I am willing to take a risk, willing to take a risk that it's not going to be another narcissist, and it's not like I have a history of being with narcissists, I mean one, one, that's it, just one. So I think I'm pretty good, um, they do want us to really keep our guard up, but just like I've always said. I can't live like that. I can't live walking around being suspicious of everybody because I will be like mean, I'll be a bitch, and I don't want to be like that. I don't feel good like that. So anyway, this was a study about us instead of them for once and some new information in terms of like yeah, well, maybe this isn't anything that we can change either. This is just how we are. And some of it's pretty damn good. So anyway, uh, thanks for listening today. And I hope you go to that website that I mentioned and uh, listen to some of the podcasts that are going to be coming up this week. Thanks for listening.